Okay. I didn't want to look at me too long. Okay. Um, question was about uh, the uh, the kicker situation with uh, Rodrigo uh, gone. Uh, you had him for four seasons. H how did you feel going into the game with Jack as your kicker? And do you remember much about how he ended up at Georgia? Uh, I, I thought he did a tremendous job. He had a lot of composure. Uh, trust me, it was not easy for him to win that job. Um, there were a lot more intense battles uh, throughout our 25, 26 practices. Uh, for him to get to that point, um, uh, he's done a great job. I, I tell you, the, the best thing about him is he's improved. I mean, you know, Rod was here, and he was kicking with Coach Fountain and those guys and working each day, and he didn't really stand out. And uh, he stood out this year. He's done a great job. He's really been impressive uh, with his kickoffs. Um, he kind of won that job first in uh, camp. And then he continued to battle at field goals with uh, Zerk and um, with uh, Camarda. And he ended up winning the job. But uh, he's a great young man. He does a great job. Uh, know his high school coach really well. And his high school coach bragged on him all the time. Rocky Hidalgo told me how good he was. And uh, he came to us, walked on, and he's earned the job thus far. Uh, Coach, as far as uh, a few thoughts on the play of your, your defensive line going into this game and along those lines, how much of your freshman Jalen Carter and Warren Brinson helped both of the rotations? They've both done a good job. Um, they're a work in progress like most freshmen. They had some, some freshman mistakes. Uh, they were able to go in and play, and the kid that uh, didn't get to make the trip just based on sheer numbers but is playing really well. And, the one thing I've learned is how much better kids get during the season by going to the scout team. And, uh, you know, Warren goes down there, Timon goes down there, Jalen goes down there, Nas goes down there. And Nas is the guy I'm referencing that's is getting so much better by going against uh, Trey Hill and Justin every day. They just get so much good work. It makes you realize how much faster you can get better. And uh, those, those guys have helped uh, bolster the rotation for sure. Mike Griffith and uh, Seth Emerson. Uh, yeah, Kirby, I want to ask you about the offensive line. I know you said we, we don't ask about that enough. So I want to follow up with the center position and the right tackle position. And and what are some of the options that you're looking at there? I know you talked about moving Trey over to right guard. Some are you worried about the continuity and who's in those battles? Well, those battles will continue all year. To be honest with you, if we didn't think they were the best players, they probably wouldn't have been there in the first place, right? So there's 25 plays, 25 practices. That's a body of work. And I think a lot of times people think you're going to magically fix it with a change. Um, you got to get your players to play better. And um, where you have an opportunity to make a change or you've got a competitive battle, you certainly got to use it that way. And um, Warren McClendon and, and Owen continue to, to work at right tackle. Uh, they both played in the game. And uh, that was really the first real game action. Uh, when I say real, you know, Warren got to play some but in the past. But Owen and Warren both getting in their first real game action, they're going to grow and get better. Um, and then Trey has always rotated a guard for us. He's done that every year he's been here. And Warren, you have to have two to three centers every game because that's a situation that you could get in trouble. So we've got three guys we travel. Uh, Warren Erickson and Trey Hill both rotated guard. So uh, we feel good about those rotations we got. And, uh, you know, I thought those guys passed pro pretty well. Uh, we didn't get the holes we wanted in the run game. But some of that has to do with a lot of other things. How close is Clay Webb to jumping in that battle center guard? Uh, he's not playing any center. Clay hasn't played any center for us, but uh, he's in the battle. He's been battling a little bit of an ankle injury. So, unfortunately, he's had an ankle injury, and that's why he wasn't able to, to make the trip uh, uh, last week. Um, but he's, he's not 100%, but he's continuing to get better. Kirby, uh, following up on a little bit on what you said about body of work, preseason versus games, tying in Dewan's performance, also the O-line. How do you balance and, and decide, like, was it just that someone wasn't ready for the when the lights are on or that the game is the best indicator going forward? Or, or how, do you, how do you balance and make those decisions for going forward? Again, that's why I wasn't, you know, I wasn't tremendously upset after the game because I've seen the body of work. So when you're sitting there with 25 practices under your belt, you've seen some practices that probably looked something like what we did out there. And then I've seen some that didn't, you know, and they go against a pretty good defense every day, whether it's our ones or twos. So I've, we, we've had days that, that, that were like that, where we're one play away, one penalty, one thing. So I don't get overly emotional about it. I 
try to say, well, look, we got to get better at, at what we got to do. Um, but I look at the scrimmages as this games, and we had three of those, and then we've had one game. And that's the body of work you try to go by and the practices you go by. You try to make the best decisions for your team and your organization off of it. How about Chip Towers and then Dean Leggy? Coach, uh, uh, I don't know about the status of Trey McKitty. Uh, perhaps you could update us on him a little bit. But in your tight ends in general, uh, yeah, that looks like a pretty good group all of a sudden. And specifically, if you could comment on uh, John Fitzpatrick, uh, uh, you know, a guy who's obviously he's been there and he, he finally gets his first uh, career TD catch in, in that game. Yeah, uh, Trey was able to uh, practice some, what's today, Tuesday? So he practiced a little bit Monday, did some light work, didn't get to do a lot of stuff. And then today he increased that uh, a little bit more. So uh, he's coming along nicely. He's got a chance to play. I mean, uh, you know, it's one of those deals that you'd like to get some, some really good live action before you go out there in the game. I don't know if we're going to get a chance to do that. But uh, he certainly improved and in getting in better shape. Uh, yeah, that group's worked really hot, hard. Uh, Coach Hartley's done a good job with them. Um, I thought Fitz has, done, had, Fitz has had a really good camp. You know, he uh, he got dinged up in one of the scrimmages and missed a little time. So it's almost like he was just getting back when we got ready for this game week. And uh, and I, I think if he had had the entire camp, he would be even further along. Uh, but what's happened between Fitz being out a little and Trey being out a little is Darnell's got a ton of work, and so has uh, Brett Scyther. So. Those guys are getting a lot of reps. Kirby, today Gus said that y'all had probably the most talented overall team in the league. Uh, do you think that's accurate? And how do you think uh, that's assessed across the league when y'all look at other programs? I think if you ask somebody the week of the game, the team they're playing will have the most talent in the league. And then next week, that team will have the most talent. And then the next week, that team will have the most talent. And that's called coach speak. So thanks, Gus. He has the most talent in the SEC himself. Let's go to Jake Rowe and then uh, to Jillian. Uh, yeah, Coach, I want to ask about Nolan Smith. And, uh, you know, I know you guys had a lot of good things to say about him when he first came in, effort and all those things. But that kind of seemed to turn into some production on Saturday. Uh, how much has he grown for you? And, uh, you know, that just that outside linebacker room in general, it seemed like uh, Nolan and, and Jermaine and, uh, and Aziz all played a ton on Saturday. Yeah, they, they all have roles. They all have different strengths, um, and they feed off of each other. Uh, they are, they're a fun group to coach. I think Coach Lang does a great job. They're very prideful uh, in their performance, and that's the way it should be within your unit. Uh, we try to find more ways to use them in our defense and be creative about creating roles for them that, that uh, cause problems for the offense. So I'm very pleased with those guys. Nolan is uh, – is, <laughs> He's uh, fun to coach. He's full of spirit. He's never had a bad day, and he's fired up out there on the practice field. And he's one of those guys you just like to coach. I mean, he texted me the other night and said, can I go to the scout team? I'm not getting enough reps. I'm having to rotate among three guys. I, I want more reps. Can I go get reps on the scout team? That's just the kind of kid he is. Hey, Coach. So, um, Arkansas's receivers found plenty of space early on, and then – now this Saturday um, against receivers like Seth Williams that looked pretty solid um, during their game. How big of a worry is that coming into this game? Well, they have the most talent in the SEC, so I'm very concerned when it comes to the, their receiving core and their talent level. It, it always worries me when you play Auburn. Um, they've got great players. They've got a quarterback that can get the ball to those guys. Uh, Chad's doing an unbelievable job of moving guys around and putting them in, in spots um, that they're not normally in. Um, so uh, they've got – their skill level at receiver is, is really good. Uh, Jed May or Brandon, either one of you from Macon, why don't you go ahead? Hey, uh, Kirby, I uh, wanted to ask you about the, uh, the Auburn-Georgia rivalry itself. Um, can you recall um, some moments where you, where you were able to realize or you were involved in the history of that rivalry and just – do you ever think about the, the history and the value of it? You talking about me personally being involved in it, like playing or just? Yeah, I mean, just at any point. Like, did you ever, like, realize the history of it and how the tr tr tradition involved in the Jordan Auburn rivalry? Yeah, I'm probably not versed in history as well as I should be. I, I, I was, I, I say this uh, with much respect. I was not, I grew up a high school football fan. I didn't know a lot about college football. So I, I didn't grow up 
when I grew up going up on Saturday to watch the JV team play and watch the uniforms. My games were always on Friday night. Those were my heroes. Um, so I didn't get to really watch the, the, the long time, you know, early 80s, 90s. I didn't really start paying attention to Georgia Auburn until I got to Georgia, uh, probably in high school is when I started really noticing the game. I had friends at Auburn and I had friends at Georgia. Uh, but obviously played in some really classic battles, the, the first ever overtime game, I guess, in the SEC, maybe in college football. Um, I was a part of that one. I was part of some heartbreaking losses to them and some some big wins. Got just a little time left. Let's open it up to anybody. Go ahead. Hey, Kirby. Hey. Auburn's usually, when it's a home game, a, a very big recruiting weekend for you guys. And obviously – it's very different this year with no visits. From a recruiting perspective, what do you expect this weekend to sort of look like for your staff? There is none. I mean, uh, everybody's trying to, uh, you know, uh, celebrate recruits virtually, and that's about all you can do. You, know, you can't – they can't come. So uh, there's not a lot we can do. Uh, try to generate a, an awesome atmosphere with our fans, uh, you know, make social media videos. Uh, FaceTime guys when we can. Um, there's just not a lot we can do. I, I, you know, maybe somebody's doing something better than us, but but you know we, we can't fill up the stands. That's the best way to impress them, and probably the next best way is to play well, and uh, that's what we need to do. Kirby, we haven't had a chance to to meet with JT or get to know anything about him. Can, can you share, uh, you know, just some things, some traits about him, and and you know how he's come along? I know you said it would be difficult for him to prove everything in a, in one week of practice. Yeah, he's an extremely bright kid, uh, delightful to be around, very uh, intellectual. I mean, he's, you know, he asks a lot of questions, um, and he, 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 he digs deep into the game. The game's really important to him. Um, it's fun to be around. Uh, he gets the ball out really quick. He's got a quick release and a, a great arm talent. Um, so he's, he's doing a good job. He's out there working. And, I mean, for us, it's not really different than it was before. He's, he's, he was practicing before. So he's just practicing more now. Coach, just one quick follow-up about, about JT. Uh, obviously, he traveled to Arkansas last week. It wasn't clear. What was the decision made to let him go to that game last week? The hopes that he would be cleared. Yeah. Good time for another question. Anybody? All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Everybody Coach. have a great day.